It sounds so glamorous, doesn't it? Moving to another country where no one knows your name. Starting from scratch where everything's a new experience. Don't get me wrong, moving to another country can be and has been so rewarding, but there are things that I feel get overshadowed by social media glamorizing this lifestyle. So let's break it down. And just a quick disclaimer, this is just my thoughts and feels. You might have a totally different life experience and you might have a totally different life experience when it comes to living abroad in this same country that I'm living in. That's the beauty of life. So let's jump straight into it. Feeling alone, and I, I feel like this is an obvious one, like loneliness, homesickness, those kind of things like typically are pretty well known when it comes to living abroad, you know what I mean? But I just feel like it goes way deeper than some people might think. Because even when you're not alone, it can feel very lonely living in a different country. You can be in a room full of so many people and still feel alone. You can just long for someone to understand you. And I'm not just talking about like language, like speaking the same language. I'm talking about your upbringing, the inside jokes, like those are things that I really didn't think too much about that I would long for. It's like you're in a state of being constantly misunderstood, even in an English speaking country. And it can just feel exhausting and just bring this sense of loneliness. For example, I'll hear a word and it will remind me of like an old like jingle from a commercial that, you know, is really well known growing up. And I'll start singing that jingle and people will be like, what are you even talking about? It doesn't always bother me and it, and it didn't always bother me, but I found with time, it just got to a point where you're just like, oh, like, I wish somebody, I wish somebody could laugh with me about this. That scenario itself is not that big of a deal or that deep or heavy, you know what I mean? It's when those feelings accumulate, it builds up over time. I think that's where it can start to really weigh on you. People just grew up with a whole, different set of things to associate their childhood with. And while it can be really fun and interesting learning the differences and, you know, comparing and all that kind of stuff, I've definitely had that. It 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 does have this layer of like, oh, I miss home. I miss I miss having someone to just understand me off the bat. And I know that's not why people move abroad. That's not why I moved abroad. You don't move abroad necessarily so that you can just have everything be the exact same as when you were home, but that's not to say it doesn't take a toll on you. That's just part of the roller coaster of human emotions that we deal with. You just get to the point where you're just really craving that sense of familiarity. Familiarity? You want the familiar, you know what I mean? It makes you almost cherish that feeling even more when you do find it abroad. When you do find those little feels of familiar in another country, it just makes it feel a little extra special. But again, it can get really heavy. I don't think you would expect those little things that feel so minuscule to lead to those heavy, heavy feelings over time. But in my experience, they have. Next, culture shock. And this is a term, again, that I feel like a lot of people are familiar with when it comes to living abroad, right? But I feel like it's more in this like trendy way, like it's a trendy term that people use to like talk about the fun. It's usually about like the food, the day-to-day -day, like work-life differences that you, you have culture shock around, you know what I mean? It's the fun, light-hearted side of culture shock. But sometimes culture shock is dark like how a culture might treat women or how they might view or treat other races. That stuff can be so confronting and I just like to put the reminder out there that culture shock is not reserved for all the lighthearted things. Like it has a dark side as well. The strain that it can have on friendships. Often we talk about, you know, we miss our friends and family, but it, the strain it can have on some friendships. It's hard, you know, I do believe that there are the friendships that will stand the test of time, you know, no matter what life throws at you. But being in a long distance friendship is so damn hard. Time zones alone are hard, but then the fact you throw in just aging and life changing and life circumstances changing as you get older. You both have to adapt and try to make that work and figure out like where your place is in this friendship now that the life circumstances are completely different. I definitely struggle with the time zones, for sure. I find that like the times that are so convenient for my friends and family to talk are just not ideal for me and vice versa. 
whether it's like middle of the work day or people are sleeping or whatever it is. There's so many constant clashes um, and it can just feel a little discouraging. And again, it's, it's when it starts accumulating, that's when it can really bring on these heavy, dark feelings. It can really get in the way of you trying to have a consistent like time or day to catch up, you know what I mean? That also brings guilt which I will touch on later. On one end, you're out there living the life that you feel called to live and you're loving it, but on the other, it comes at a cost. And that cost is missing out on things that mean a lot to you. When you are off building your own life in another country, you simply just can't be there for everything, even if you want to be. It's, it's just a hard balancing act. Then you have to factor in things like money, price of travel. And I know I wasn't able to go home for four years when we were going through our lockdowns here. So there's just external circumstances that also play into that that we have no control over and that can impact your mental health and we will touch on that but I know another thing that people living abroad struggle with it's like every time you put aside money or you have time to go away you want to see other parts of the world but then you feel this extreme guilt that you're not using that time to go spend it with your friends and family and loved ones back home every time i have a chance to go travel somewhere i feel the pull like do i want to go visit my friends and family back home or do i want to go and explore a new country and sometimes it comes down to you have to having to choose between those two um, and those are hard decisions to make because you're feeling pulled by your heartstrings and in so many different directions. It's a bit of a sacrifice that you have to make because sometimes it's just like, I just wanna go and see my family and you put whatever, your bucket list trip on hold because it's not like you're home. It's not like you're going to your bucket list trip and then you're coming home to be around your friends and family you know, on the regular. So it, it puts another like big decision on the plate when you want to factor in these type of travel kind of thing. Now, when it comes to mental health, I feel like our mental health naturally just goes through its ups and downs, you know, that's life. But living abroad can definitely add another level to impacting our mental health. I find every year I go through periods of like intense, mild to intense homesickness. And it comes and goes in waves. I never went through this feeling before moving abroad. So this is a whole new like emotional ride that I have to go through every single year. And it's definitely something I'm still learning how to manage. And I knew I would feel, I knew I would feel homesick moving abroad. I knew that that would happen. I just didn't, I just don't think I fully understood how heavy that could feel at times and how much homesickness ties into our mental health. I did not really understand that until I fully experienced that. And it was obviously at its worst when we were in lockdowns and uh, it was out of my hands. That challenged my mental health so much, and I know I'm not alone in that. But even outside of that, it can be so heavy. There's layers to all of these topics that just are way heavier than I ever anticipated. And so it's like you can prepare yourself to an extent, but nothing can really prepare you until you're in the situation and how you manage that and how you deal with it. And obviously the support system that you have in whatever country you're moving to plays a big role in that. Some people are fortunate enough to move to a country where they have a really strong foundational support system. But there's a lot of people out there like me that don't have that big support system. All my friends and family still live in the US. Even if you have the strongest, biggest support network, I think that there's a time where you will feel that heaviness as well. I think that when you uproot your whole life and move to another country, after growing up somewhere and having such strong ties somewhere, it's going to impact you to some level. And you know, I can't speak for everyone, but I, I do believe that there comes, a, maybe it's a temporary period where you go through like these heavy feels, but they definitely, they definitely are there. Living abroad guilt, let's talk about that. And I touched on that a little bit earlier. But in my eyes, it's similar to when I hear people talking about mom guilt. You know, you feel bad doing stuff for yourself instead of like doing stuff for your family and your kids. Living abroad, the guilt comes with like chasing your life desires. The things that you're feeling called to do, you feel bad about it because it means that you have to accept that you are going to miss out on things. And you have to accept that things are gonna be different when you go home. You're essentially grieving the loss of one lifestyle while embracing 
a new one. So it's like crazy emotions going on. The excitement of starting something new, but the guilt and the heaviness and the, the mental impact of grieving the loss of things are going to be different and I'm going to miss out. And I am actively making this choice because I am feeling so called and passionate to do this. And it, it is just, it's just an emotional roller coaster. And being an in-betweener, as I call it, I think someone commented this on one of my um, one of my posts. Um, and then I was like, ooh, I like that, an, an in-betweener. I think it was on the one about like my accent when Aussies hear my accent, and my, my accent sounds like an in-betweener. Like sometimes some words sound Aussie and sometimes they sound American, even though I think I sound very American. But the in-betweener. So so it's like one place doesn't feel like home, but you've also been away from your actual home for so long that that doesn't really feel the same either. You feel like an outsider on some level in both countries. So you're just like this in-betweener. It's like living in this weird limbo place. I don't know if I explained that properly, but if you get it, you get it and you don't need a full explanation, but it's just those feels. And it's, it's honestly one of the things I hate most about living abroad. Sometimes I wonder if I will ever feel at home anywhere ever again. And I know that sounds like so deep, but like these are the heavy feelings that I am talking about in this video that I feel like this stuff it, I don't see circling around the internet and going viral. You know what I mean? Like will I ever have a sense of home ever again? And it's pushed me to really try and create a sense of home within myself and how I show up in the world. And, and finding that feeling internally instead of like externally. I don't know if that makes sense, if that's possible. I don't know if that's a thing, but we're trying to cope here, okay? We're trying to cope. And don't get me wrong because Melbourne does feel like home to me, but I still often find times where I do feel like an outsider. And like home feels like home to me. And like I have all my childhood memories there, but there are times where I, I just feel out of place. I feel like, you know when people talk about like, we all have that friend that it feels like no time has passed. Sometimes when I'm home, I feel the time that has passed. I feel the distance, you know what I mean? And not because of anything anyone's done or what has been said or anything, it's just realizing how long it's been since I've stood in this exact spot, since I've looked at this exact view, since I've had these kind of belly laughs. Like that hits you in the gut and I, I can feel myself right now getting emotional just thinking of that. So I think that there's certain things in both countries that will always like feel like home and a part of who I am. But at the same time, there are definitely things in both countries that I feel like out of place. So when I say truly feel like home, it's without that outsider feeling. And I don't even know if that's possible. But this is my choice to, you know, move to another country to see more of the world. So I'm working towards navigating those feelings that come along with that. And I don't have all the answers just yet. And I'm still working this out. I still feel like I'm in the thick of embracing this, even though it's been a decade. Like the years go by so quickly. I just wanted to create a video to bring a little bit of awareness and insight on the not so glamorous side of living abroad. Did any of these surprise you or would you add anything to the list? I would love to hear from you so let me know in the comments if you enjoy content like this make sure you hit the subscribe button i hope to see you tuning into another video soon thanks for watching bye